Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, admin evangelist, and this is how I solved it. Ever been in a situation where you need to make certain users an exception to a process? Matt Henry will show us how to use custom permissions for the win. Today, I'm with Matt Henry, a nonprofit solution architect at Ascendably. Welcome, Matt. Hi, thanks, Jennifer. So Matt, um, how did you get started with Salesforce? Well, uh, I found out about Salesforce while I was in a career change. At the time, I was in a fellowship with a, a nonprofit called The Mission Continues. It's an organization that connects veterans with under-resourced communities. And so I was doing a, a six-month fellowship and they shared with me that they use Salesforce. And so that's, I mean, that's when I first learned about it. The, you know, and I learned about the, the VetForce program, which is um, Salesforce has a workforce development program where they offer training resources to veterans for um, taking, uh, taking classes or, or vouchers for taking certification exams. Oh, that's a great program. So um, what type of advice would you have for new admins looking to get started in the nonprofit space? Uh, so I guess I have three things that I really want to highlight. Uh, the first one is like, find your tribe, find your pe group of people. You're, there's a bunch of Ohana-like communities out there. Some of them are in the Salesforce communities. Now there's ones in Facebook, Twitter, Slack. You can f so find, places. <laughs> yeah, I mean, find a group of people that, um, will support you and answer your questions and that you can support them with as you learn. Um, the second thing is like always be learning, right? Um, and Trailhead is great, but also stretch beyond that into other things. There are, there's so many different areas working with nonprofits that you can go into. There's a lot of solutions that complement Salesforce that you can learn about. So follow your interests there, explore. Um, and the, th the third one is, uh, you know, in, in Trailhead, you have playgrounds, but when you're at work, you, uh, those are called sandboxes. <laughs> so build a, build a habit of using a sandbox to do, um, to do any sort of work that you want so that when you're trying to do, like use it, even use it for the easy stuff, right? The things you think is safe to make a change in production because it's a really small org and it's a really small change, like build the habit of doing it in a sandbox anyway, so that when you move into doing hard things, you already have that habit there to rely on. Great, yeah. So. Those three pieces, um, really key, you know, finding that tribe, um, the Ohana is like no other. Um, everyone's just so supportive um, yeah. and the whole um, don't make changes directly in prod, love that, right? Because uh, <laughs> when you start doing complex things like automation, you're not going to want to do it in production because then you're testing on production data and that's just a bad, bad thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so why don't you share with us the business problem that you were trying to solve? Yeah, so, so our business problem, uh, this is at um, Youth Opportunities Unlimited. They're a Cleveland uh, workforce development nonprofit organization. And they, they, they receive a lot of government funding, which also means they have a lot of rather complex eligibility requirements that um, participants have to meet before they can be approved to be in the program. And it also means that they need to print out paper files once all of the eligibility is finished. So we had, um, so the things that were like in place to start with uh, is we have a custom object for handling eligibility documents and we have an approval process to work that file through several stages of review and approval. And the approval process at the end 
locks the record. So nobody can edit the record anymore. And sort of the monkey wrench is that there's a, um, there was a requirement to print the file after the approval is complete. And then to be able to mark it that it was printed so that they know, so the staff know what their work list is, which ones have been printed and which ones haven't. And so that was a real challenge is because the, the record was already locked. They can't edit the record. Um, so that, I mean, that was, so that was the problem to try to solve here. Great. Now, you know, we're admin, so we want to see how you actually did it in Salesforce. So why don't you show us? The way I solved this is I started with flow, right? Flow is, you know, it, it can do some really cool things for us. And one thing that it can do is it can run in system mode. And so if you need to, you can you can set it to ignore the fact that um, that user is not a system admin, and it's going to make the edit as if it were like a system admin. So we started with a flow. It's going to run in system mode. So I'll go find my flow here. So this is a really simple flow, but the key thing is that it's marked runs as system. So if you're not sure where to find that, when you set up the flow in the settings with the gear under show advanced, um, there's how there's a, a setting to change the context. Right now I have it set um, system context without sharing, access all data. And so it's not running as the user who is um, clicking the buttons, it's running as the system. So that's a key piece that makes this flow work. There's one screen and the one screen has one field on it, paper file status with a default value set to created. And then it has one update element to simply, this updates the record where the flow was started. So it's pretty straightforward, but it I think it, it's kind of powerful in that it lets, you know, it beats the requirements here. So the way this looks in the system, it's on this uh, eligibility file. So this is my custom object. This flow just shows up over here as its own little field. And all they have to do is click next and the status is updated. But there were, there's some additional requirements, right? Um, since this flow is running in system, anybody that sees it can click the button, right? And so I don't want, I don't want staff who aren't supposed to use it to be able to, to do that. I also don't want staff to, um, I don't want them to be able to, to click that when it's not appropriate, right? I want it hidden when they shouldn't do it. And I want it hidden from people who should not use it. And that's where the custom permission comes in. So the next piece of this is, is called a custom permission. The, these things are great. They're super easy. Um, I don't think a lot of admins use them, but they are really, really handy. So I'll show you the, the custom permission now. So the custom permission is great to use when, right, when you don't have a standard permission or some other way um, to meet your need. The, the permission has your, um, it, it just has a name. There, there isn't really much to do that. Um, so I have this um, manage eligibility files permission. And all I've had to do to create it is give it a name. I say this permission exists. It's like, you know, it's declarative. Like I literally declare this permission exists and that's it. Um, the next step for sort of deploying this out is to assign it to a permission set. I won't have to 
So there we go. And I gave I gave the permission set the same name to keep things easy. So you'll see, you know, you're used to, you know, typically there's object settings or there's system permissions. This one's found, it's found in a custom permissions section. So I've added this custom permission and it's just a checkbox at this point, just like checking any other system permission. And the assignments, and then I use manage assignments, of course, to assign it to the set of users that I want to, to, to have this permission. Okay, so the last piece of this permission is to make it do something, right? So the place where we make that permission matter is on the Lightning Record page. So here I'm gonna to navigate to uh, edit page. That's gonna give me my Lightning Record page. And here's the flow component. So this is how it's get. This is how my solution is getting deployed out to users. Is I've added, you know, a flow component which you can find. It's just a standard component that can be added to pretty much any Lightning Record page. And then it uses this conditional visibility, uh, the con conditional visibility settings to make sure. Uh, only the people who should see it can. And then also only the status values that are acceptable can, you know, it won't show up when it shouldn't. So so in this in this case, there's three conditions. The eligibility file status is passed audit. The paper file status is ready for paper file creation. And then there's this last, permission. And this, this is where, um, let's see, I want to show you how to get here. So we're on the permissions, we click advanced. And then uh, let's see if this will open. We're going to find permissions. And then we get a choice between custom or standard. We we'll pick custom and then go find the, the API name for the permission. At this point, it, the solution is deployed. The, uh, the only other thing I wanted to highlight as part of this permission is, or as part of the solution is this really simple idea, like I don't, think list views get enough love sometimes. Like they're so easy to for an admin, especially to make, that they almost get forgotten as part of app design, that they really can um, have a huge, uh, huge benefit for staff to know which records to work with. So in this case, there's a, a list view called ready for paper file creation. And this gives staff this is their list that they work to zero. These are all the ones that meet those same conditions that the of the flow component. And so they can work this list to zero. And then whenever uh, new items come in through the workflow, um, they will just be added to this list automatically, and then they can work on these files. So when we, you know, we'll mark this one, we'll say we printed off what we needed to print off. Click next. The, uh, the field has been updated to paper file created and the component disappeared because it's not needed anymore. And the record fell off the list view because there's no work to be done on it anymore. 
I think this is a great solution. And I totally agree with you in terms of custom permissions is really an underrated admin superpower. Mm -hmm. Um, But I love that you were able to use you know, grant lease privilege access to folks so that not everyone has access to be able to update that, um, the field that you're exposing with a screen flow, but also certain conditions need to be met before a person can actually um, access that component um, using component visibility, which is a really cool feature in Lightning App Builder. Plus, I love how you use um, that same logic that you use to show that flow component in a list view as well. So it's it's great to see m- multiple use cases for uh, custom permissions. Mm-hmm. So um, thank you, Matt, so much for sharing our, your solution with us of how to use custom permissions to allow the administrative staff to update a record after it's locked in approval process with us today and um, for being a guest on how I solved it. Yeah, thanks so much. It was a lot of fun. You just saw how Matt used an underrated admin superpower, custom permissions, to allow users to update records locked by an approval process. I recommend thinking about business problems that you can solve using custom permissions. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solved It. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome Admin!